Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at an alternative to using the MS Teams widget in Brightspace to create team meetings for your students. One of the major advantages of using a team with your students when it comes to Microsoft Team Meetings is your students will always know where to find the team meeting. All the students need to do is log in on their phones, laptops, or any device with an internet connection. Once they've logged into their class team, all they need to do is click on the link to the meeting, and they're all set. When you create or schedule a meeting in a team, all team members are automatically notified, as long as their notification settings are set correctly. All right, it sounds like using Microsoft Teams with my students is a pretty good idea. Now, how do I create a team? Well, log into Teams, and on the left-hand side, click on the Teams tab. Then, in the top right-hand corner, click on the button that says Join or Create a Team. One of the ways that you can avoid entering in all of the team members manually after you create a team is to create a code for the team and email it to everyone you want to join. This way, the members can come in and self-enroll into your team. But we'll save joining a team with a code for another video. To create a new team, all you need to do is click on the Create a New Team image on the left-hand side. There's four different types of teams that you can create. You can create a class team. You can create a personal learning community team. You can also create a staff team or you can create an other team. Now, depending on how you plan on using this team with your class, you may not need all the functionality that comes with a class team. So since you're also using Brightspace with your students, I suggest that you use the other template to use with your students. Next, give your team a name and add a description if you like, and then click the next button down at the bottom. Once your team has been created, you can get to work adding all of your students to the team. Once the students have been added, they'll all receive a notification in their Outlook email. And that's all there's to it. Now, let's take a look at how to schedule a meeting. Over in the top right hand corner, you can use the meeting drop down to either create a meeting that's going to start right away or to schedule a meeting. Let's schedule a meeting. Now, you need to give your meeting a title. We don't need to add any required attendees because all of our students are in this team. When we send out notification to the team members, all of our students will receive that notification. Set a start date and time and an end date and time. If this is going to be a recurring meeting, use the recurring drop down and select how often you want the meeting to recur and when you want the recurrence to stop. Once you've got everything set the way you want it, simply click Save. Now you can add a location if you like. I like to put in Microsoft Teams and you can add a description for the meeting for your students. When everything's all set, all you need to do is click the Send button in the top right hand corner. Your students will receive notification of the scheduled meetings and there'll be a link to the meeting in the general channel chat. Whew, that was a mouthful. If for any reason you need to make any changes to a scheduled meeting, all you need to do is click on the calendar tab over on the left hand side, find the meeting, and select it. Now you can make your changes, and after you've made your changes, you can send an update to all the members of your team. There's one last thing that I want to talk about. Some of you have mentioned that you've had problems with students being in your team meetings and muting the other students, and even kicking them out of the meeting. Well, it's because you created the meeting and allowed everyone to be able to present. If you go into the meeting options at the top of the page, as a presenter, you have the ability to not only share your screen with everybody in the meeting, but you also have the power to mute other people and to kick them out of the meeting. That's why I suggest you change this option from everyone to only me. Now don't worry, in a meeting, you can click on the ellipsis beside any one of your students and give them the ability to be a presenter if you wish, but until you do that, your students won't be able to mute or kick other students out of a class. All right, that's just how easy it is to set up Microsoft Teams and to use team meetings with your class.